we've been talking a lot about 12 years ago today, Nick Saban stood at that podium and delivered a press conference. And to be honest with you, some of the things that he said, it was almost like he was looking into a crystal ball and projecting maybe a little prophecy with what Alabama was going to be able to accomplish. Little did we know he's going to be playing for a chance to go past uh, with Coach Bryant on national titles. Not wins, but national titles on Monday. This guy was a part of the team when Nick Saban was announced. Corey Reamer, I hope you're doing well, man. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Hey, guys, what's going on? Doing well. Hope y'all are uh, enjoying that California weather while we're stuck here at Birmingham enjoying nice, uh, gray, rainy days. Well, li- listen, I just left the Birmingham about 5 a.m. this morning. I had 30 minutes prior to showtime, and thankfully I was able to get on. And, and, and matter of fact, I played one of your old buddies, uh, Will Lowry, uh, replayed his interview from yesterday. So uh, a lot of Hoover connections here on the game. Yes, sir. You know, we're just uh, building a dynasty over there at Hoover, just uh, getting pound out the door. we got a lot of kids that are uh, – hopefully we got one coming in as a kicker that's going to be helping us out next year as well, keeping the tradition going. Corey, because you played for Nick Saban, because you were part of that transition, can you take us back? I, I, I want you to tell us, because we, we've been talking about 12 years ago to Nick Saban stood at that podium and was introduced as Alabama's next head coach. Where were you when you found out it was Nick Saban? Oh, that's uh, that's a good question. There's so many different memories that you have from when we actually uh, found out that he was going to be the coach uh, and where we were when he actually took the podium to give that speech. But the most uh, memorable moment was definitely in the locker room when uh, ESPN was talking about the fact that he's going to be the next head coach at Alabama and showing a lot of the clips from his days at LSU, his days in Miami, and a lot of the talking heads giving their thoughts on him coming to take over the program. And, you know, it was the, the uncertainty of it all was really what I remember the most of, you know, Rich Rod was the guy, Steve Spurrier supposedly was in Tuscaloosa at one point. We had a lot of names that were being thrown out. So uh, by the time they actually made, and then obviously Coach Saban going on record to say that he's not going to be the next head coach at Alabama, you just, there was uh, a lot of, we were all in limbo of uh, who's going to be the guy. So when he finally got it in concrete, he showed up. And I remember seeing uh, all the media coverage of him arriving out at Tuscaloosa Airport and uh, all the fans that were out there greeting him. Uh, It was was a crazy time. And then to see him stand up there and give a speech uh, to the media about what his expectations are and what his game plan is. And to be honest, that has never changed. He is stuck by his word, like he said, uh, you know, from day one. Uh, a lot of the things that you heard in the first year when he was there in that in the team meeting room with us uh, the very first time, laying out what uh, the game plan were, what the blueprint was for the process, and what his expectations were for us. The, that's been the most uh, impressive thing about him is that that has not changed since the day he stepped foot on campus. And obviously he knows the recipe for success and uh, sticks with it. Obviously he's made some changes uh through the times and through the years as far as the offensive and defensive scheme. But uh, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of what it takes to win in college football, he's uh, one of the best. We're talking to Corey Reamer, outside backer at the University of Alabama. This guy's been a winner at every level uh, he's ever played at. Won three national, excuse me, three state championships at Hoover. Uh, won a national title here at the University of Alabama. Now he's winning at Bryant Bank and a guy that represents them in, in a great capacity as, as we continue talking Corey Reamer. Uh, Corey, let's go back to Alabama and Oklahoma for just a couple of seconds. Uh, y- your biggest takeaway from your perspective last week? Uh, man, I uh... – I really didn't expect Oklahoma's defense to be as uh, as as bad as they really were. You know, you you get a team that's a, a Power Five conference like that, and and to watch us move the ball as efficiently as we did against those guys. Not their, you know, their offense is obviously something special, but for us to come out, uh, really the the most thing, the thing that really shocked me the most was the, from the uh, you know the coin flip when Lincoln Riley decides to put his defense on the field. Uh, at the start of the game and, and give our offense a chance to take the ball first, I really was uh, surprised by that move, knowing that his defense was what, you know, it's, there's no there's no arguing about what the numbers were they put up this year. And to give two of the ball uh, coming out the gate and being able to take it down the field, of, you know, first play from scrimmage, 
getting getting some huge chunks of yards and scoring easily, I really thought that that set the tone to the game, and it really shocked me the most that we that he made that decision to to let his defense be the first thing that steps on the field for that game. Uh, but we uh, two has two has obviously recovered very well and is looking great. Uh, he looked extremely healthy. His, his uh, everything that he did during the game looked like he like the beginning of the year versus you know the last half of the season where he where he struggled a little bit with his accuracy. He looked like he uh, the the surgery went well and that's exciting to see for especially going into this national championship game against a much better defense in Clemson. Uh, but they were you know give them give Oklahoma credit. They were they were they fought back. I feel like we were. We kind of came off the gas a little bit uh, in the second half, and, and they scored some points. They got an electric player in their quarterback, but uh, we were we were definitely prepared for that game, and I think shocked a lot of people by coming out and getting a twenty eight you know twenty eight point lead early. Corey, this is probably going to sound like a dumb question from a guy that that's never suited up and, and played on the field that you have, but Nick Saban talked about his team uh, maybe backing off a little bit. I also thought the game plan. Uh, they went into a little bit of conservative mode uh, with, with some of the play calling. They wanted to make sure that their defense was not worn out. As a player, you know – I mean, you, you guys are super intelligent. You, you know exactly what's happening. When you see your coaching staff kind of reeling back a little bit, how human nature is it to also kind of become a little bit complacent within the game? Yeah, it's. I think it's – it's, one of the things that Coach Saban's the best at is preparing his teams, you know, for no, you know, for no matter who the opponent is. But when you see, when you get the feeling like I, feel, I think the team, the guys did on uh, on Saturday of being able to move the ball at will and shutting down their offense in the capacity that we did, um, it's hard. And, you know, the playbook obviously I think shrinks, and you and you see that you're far superior than your opponent. It's hard not to your intensity level to back off because you know there's got. You know, you've got another game with a quick turnaround. Um, I still think those guys played extremely tough. I just I think it was uh, Coach Saban and the coaching staff not really having to open the playbook up as much as they thought they might have to for four quarters and being able to win this ball game by – you could just tell that Oklahoma wasn't going to be able to slow this offense down. I think that we could have run the inside slant. Uh, all day long, uh, and, and Oklahoma would have never been able to stop us. And, you know, Lincoln Riley coming out after the game saying that they beat us in the second half, I mean, if that's something you want to hang your hat on, then you're more than welcome to. But if, if he really believes that we were operating at the same speed that we were in the first half, I think he's got to be crazy. We're talking to Corey Reamer. Corey, uh, we're all, you know, hoping and, and saying a prayer for Christian Miller to be able to, to go on Monday night. He's going to be valuable uh, to make sure Trevor Lawrence does not get too comfortable in that pocket. Can Alabama l- – let me just throw out a couple of scenarios, and, and maybe this is just fantasy talk, but can you get a guy ready? Because l- look at a guy like Iyabi Anoma. He's got plenty of talent, and I'm just looking for snaps. I'm trying to count up and see, okay, if Christian's not able to go – he doesn't have to learn the complete game book. He just really has to focus on one week. Uh, is that easier for a player when you just focus on the game plan and you don't have to understand the complexities of everything about Nick Saban's defense? Is it easier, or am I just putting words uh, out there that, that it's not believable? No, I think you're, uh, you're definitely right uh, for the most part. I think when you've got one game plan that you've got to worry about, you, the, the defense is not going to be the entire playbook that you've learned back in, in fall camp. It's obviously going to be uh, slimmed down to a very specific plan for a very specific offense. And, and so when you lose, you know, Christian Miller and Terrell Lewis, uh, two guys that have been providing, you know, obviously Terrell getting hurt early in the year didn't help us at all. But Christian Chris Miller Allen's another one. They, they, they both, yeah, exactly. Chris yeah, Allen. Chris, you, yeah, Chris lost, Allen's another one. Yeah. We've lost a lot of guys at linebacker. And, uh, you know, this is another chance for Anthony Jennings to step up and have uh, a game like he did last year in the postseason. And, you know, you got guys that are younger that, you know, haven't learned the playbook very quickly. But if you can get some snaps out of him on, on second and third down to be able to provide some pass rush that we're missing from by losing Christian Miller, uh, it, it's definitely helpful. And even – I wouldn't even say he has to learn the entire playbook or, or game plan for uh, – for this game, I would say if he can just learn what to do on a lot of the third down calls that we have, really minimize what he's got to think about. He's got a lot of talent. He knows how to rush the passer. And if he can get in there and affect Trevor Lawrence, uh, 
uh, on second down along, third down along, get in there and get some pass rush. We've got some solid guys in the middle that can really, uh, you know, make up for some of his shortcomings. But to really get an edge guy, you know, is is a huge bonus if we can find a way to get him on the field to be effective, even if it's only for a five to ten play. Uh, but be in there and know, and, and the coach Saban is going to make sure though we're not going to put him on the field if he doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to make sure that he's. He's aware of what is – if we, we can trust him to know what he's supposed to be doing and we can trust him to go out there and do his job and not uh, give up some big plays by him making some mental mistakes. So I think that's – if we're going to find somebody like that to get on the field, that's going to be the main thing. It's going to make it make his job simple to where he can really just pin his ears back and try to get after a guy. Don't rush up the field too far. Give this guy an alley to escape the pocket and get out and run. Uh, set to, you know, that's a lot of things – that people, uh, when you play these guys that don't have a ton of experience, that you know they're they know how to pin their ears back and go get a guy. It's setting the edge or, or maintaining the edge um, in the defense if that's your role. Not slipping inside to try to get a quarterback and giving up contain. Um, that's the thing that's really going to you know burn Coach Saban if he sees that going on out there. So that's probably been a focus for him. Uh, if for this week is to understand when if you're going to be the outside guy if you're if you're setting the edge for the defense you cannot make a mistake and slip inside just because you've got an opportunity to go get a sack on the quarterback you've got to maintain the edge because that's a huge part of his scheme is not giving up contained so if he can get out there and do that uh, I think we can if we can get him to to learn uh, enough to be an you know effective pass rusher for us on on second third down like I said that'd be huge we're talking to Corey Reamer, outside backer at the University of Alabama, uh, won a lot of championships at a high school level, won a championship here at the University of Alabama. Uh, Corey, I, I want to go into the conversation just, just for a couple of minutes. Uh, have you ever pulled a hamstring, and, and how can, can you bounce back? Because, you know, what I tried to study is day three and four, you begin to get a little bit of energy back. Uh, it looks like what I've been told, he's got a grade two. Uh, he's got a little bit of bruising. Uh, but 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 he's gonna obviously listen. Christian Miller's a fifth-year senior, man. Uh, he he didn't want to go out like this. I mean, he wants to go out and be able to play. Uh, have you ever had a battle through a hamstring injury? Oh yeah, this was this is the exact scenario that I had for our senior year uh, when we played Tennessee Chattanooga the week before Auburn. Um, I pulled my hamstring on the only interception that I ever had in my career. I should have just gone down, dropped down on the floor, and not tried to to return the ball at all because. That's when I pulled my hamstring was trying. Obviously, there's a, a reason I play defense because the ball in my hand is never a good thing, but partially tore my hamstring uh, during that return, and Auburn was the next week. And anybody who knows me knows that I grew up an Auburn fan, so that was the biggest game probably that I was, you know, wanted to be a part of in, in my time at Alabama was to be able to play Auburn at Auburn. And, uh, you know, this was when – Dr. Kane and, and uh, Jeff Allen really started this hamstring. You'll see these guys that have these bands that run down the length of their leg. You'll see it on the backside of their leg. It kind of acts as a as a support to the hamstring. Well, this was kind of the first time that they had ever used it and tried to get me prepared within a week to be able to play against Auburn. And um, I don't know how my grade was compared to what Christian Miller's is, but it was a, it was a tough turnaround. I really was not very effective. Tried to play in the game. Ali Sharif had to step in and play uh, in the nickel package for me. I tried to play in our base package against them, but it was tough. It was you really can't plant, and it, it's you you don't understand how it's not a full tear, but just a slight tear in the hamstring is extremely difficult to go full speed. So. You know, I'm hopeful that uh, they're going to be able to get something to uh, accommodate the hamstring to where he can still get out there. And, you know, even if he's at 80 percent, that'd be great. But I was I was lucky enough to be able to get back to play in the SEC championship two weeks um, after I partially tore mine. So and then had a lot of time to rest to get ready for the national championship. But a one week turnaround with this this type of injury is is really difficult so hopefully it's not as bad as what mine was or hopefully he recovers a whole lot faster than what i did and i'm sure that he's probably you know uh got the the training staff down there is working with him 24 7 to try to get him ready for this game but i I definitely know it's not going to be he's going to have some pain and it's not going to be the same christian miller that we've seen throughout the season but if he can get out there uh, and play play outside backer on first down and stop the run and be effective there. And like you said, bring in some other guys to help out on pass rush when you really 
are in space and trying to to make moves on your tackles to get to the quarterback, uh, you know, it'd be a good compliment to each other. Corey, what's your gut feeling, man? Uh, you know, uh, looking is, at the is, is Alabama going to win this game? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think that there's it's going to be a tough test. It's uh, you look at you look at what their you know their strengths versus our strengths. Uh, it's amazing how similar. Uh, Clemson and and Alabama are as far as what they really excel at. Uh, they're both really strong on the on the uh, defensive front. They've got good solid offensive lines. They've got Travis Etienne is a phenomenal running back and can really bust out a, you know some big runs. He's got I think 1500 yards rushing this season. They lean on him a lot. So uh, and then they've got a strong quarterback who can make all the throws uh, throughout the route tree and sees the field very well. I don't think he's going to be as mobile as what we saw last week in, in Kyler Murray, obviously. So um, I think that uh, as long as we can get some covered sacks, our uh, the secondary has really stepped up this year. Uh, replacing five guys coming into this season and the way they've played throughout this year uh, has been extremely impressive. So and I, and I can only imagine they're going to be ready to go. And we're going to see them be tested with, uh, you know, the deep balls that the, that Clemson usually goes for. So we've, We've got a matchup of a lot of similarities. So their offense is uh, very effective. Our offense is very effective. They've got some shortcomings in the backside of their defense. We've got a, a defensive backfield that has improved throughout the season and really come together. Um, so I think there's gonna it's going to be a good matchup. But, you know, I, I believe that our defense has an edge over uh, over their offense. I think Quentin Williams is going to continue to be, uh, uh, you know, a force up front along with, with Diggs and, Raquan Davis, I think that if we can get to the quarterback and, and affect him um, like we have been all season, it, he's going to have a long day. But they're going to put points up on the board. I, I have no doubt about that. And, and Dabo Swinney is a phenomenal coach. He knows this game. He's, you know, when you start playing these teams so many times over and over again, not much has changed from a, a schematic standpoint. These guys know each other extremely well, um, and they're going to be able to pick out how, you know, find vulnerabilities in each other's, uh, you know, in the in the shield. So uh, it's going to be a great matchup, but I think that Tua being, after watching him against Oklahoma and being able to, to put the ball in places like he was early on in the season, it looks like he can really stand in and throw the ball without any pain after that surgery. And uh, even if you've got the best coverage on, on these receivers, uh, they're going to go out and make plays. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a tough day for this Clemson secondary. And, They've improved as well, but still, you got you got three or four guys that are all averaging over 15 yards a catch. Uh, then you add in Herb Smith, and then you get Josh Jacobs, who I think is extremely effective out of the backfield as a pass catcher. You know, we saw that him running seam routes out of the backfield. You put a linebacker on him, trying to trying to slow him down. It's a it's a huge matchup advantage for us. So. I think we're going to be able to find a way to get a couple more scores than they will. I'm thinking, you know, somewhere between the 35 and 21 is what I kind of see this game turn out to be. It's, uh, but it's going to be a good one because they're they're a quality team, uh, and and I know we're, they're both they're going to be up for us, and we're going to be ready to go. And and it's uh, hopefully we'll just find a few more, make, be able to make a few more plays than they can. Breaking news around the University of Alabama. You never know when exactly things are going to break. Brent Key expected to go to Georgia Tech. We'll have more on that in the 5 o'clock hour. But as uh, word breaks out, we always like to make sure that we pass that on. Uh, we won't get your reaction on that. That'll be another day, uh, Corey. But, man, thank you so much for helping me uh, today. I-, I wanted to pick your brain about this outside backer spot and uh, some concerns and, and-, and maybe try to ease our mind. I think you've done that. And I always appreciate you for giving us a couple of minutes of your time. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, one year we'll uh, we'll go into a season without having some injuries at the outside backer position and be full health all the way through the season. I don't know if you'll need me. Anymore Wouldn't that be awesome? Have that happen? Wouldn't it be? I mean, yeah. telling you, as long as we're not LSU having to play some wide receivers at corner uh, like they did this weekend against UCF, we'll uh, we'll be okay. We're going to be in good shape. Hey, and good for uh, hey. good for Brent Keys. Jeff Collins is a great guy over there. He was uh, one of the coaches on Alabama staff when I was. When I was down there, he's going to do a phenomenal job at Georgia Tech. Excited for him. Yeah, there's, no, yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Listen, no doubt, and we we pull for those guys uh, that are from this state. Corey, thank you, man, for being a part of the show. Hey, absolutely, roll tide.